Last Sunday, Deacon Patrick gave us a little um, slice of history of religion. Today, I'd like to give you another bit of history, this time my own. It is said that one's generation is defined by the world events that were taking place when one comes of age. I think what that means is when we first, as children, become aware that there is a world around us, not just our own individual families, but there is a much larger world, and what is going on in that world when we become aware of it. Today I think of two such events that marked my life. And the first one, first world event, was the war in Vietnam. It was both far away and also very close to home because it was always on the news. Every evening, the television brought into our home stories of that faraway place and what our men and women in the military were doing. Now, my older brother was old enough to be drafted, and two of his best friends in high school actually did serve there. Uh, my brother's quite a bit taller than me, and so he was deferred. Sometimes, even as youngsters, we would talk about what was better, to be a, a person who would lay down one's life for one's country and to serve, or to join those who protested this conflict as something endless and hopeless. Now, by the time I was 18, 1972, the war was basically over, but the divisions and the discussions and the debates about this event were still very present, I think, even into our own time. That conflict sometimes is even today used as a metaphor for those seemingly endless conflicts around the world. In those very difficult times in the 1960s, there was another important event that also influenced my life. For God sent to us another man named John, John the 23rd, and the Second Vatican Council. It was said of him that he opened the windows of the church and that once again we became aware in a new way of the power of the Holy Spirit in our faith community. We read in the Acts of the Apostles when the Apostle Paul went to Ephesus and he met some believers and he asked them if they had received the Holy Spirit when they were baptized and they answered that they had never even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. And I often think that sometimes that would describe Catholics pretty well too. Yes, we have been baptized, but who's the Holy Spirit? Well, with Vatican II came a whole new emphasis on the, who the Holy Spirit is in the church, a whole new emphasis on the gift of our baptism, and particularly how baptism for all of us as God's people was the power to bring God's life and God's love, God's energy into our broken world. The role of the laity became therefore much more important. Catholics began, began to read and study and pray and live by the words of the scriptures. And this, I know for me, became the foundation of my spiritual life. We were also encouraged to take a more active part in the Mass, in the Eucharist. And I remember growing up that the first time I served Mass, it was still in Latin, and I loved the Mass in Latin, I loved the Mass. But I loved it so much more in English because now I could speak directly and participate more completely in it. And this participation of the Eucharist, I think, was at the root of my vocation to the priesthood. But God had yet another gift in mind for me because in 1975, I was in a college seminary at that point, a friend invited me to a meeting at Visitation Academy. And there in this meeting room with well over 200 people gathered, people praising God and singing and praying together, I had my first experience of what today we call the charismatic renewal. Back then, we didn't know what else to call ourselves. We were called Catholic Pentecostals because we were emphasizing Pentecost and the coming of the Spirit. But people were looking for a deeper relationship with God. In the midst of, of the chaos of their lives, they were looking for something sure and certain to trust in. And in the words of today's scripture, I think we were all looking for comfort. Comfort literally means strength within. 
strength to handle the challenges and the difficulties of life, strength to manage the chaos that we saw around us, strength to live through the divisions and the hurts and the pains of our time. And within little prayer groups and faith communities, people began to, to share their faith. We began to pray aloud in our own words, and we discovered a new meaning and new depth of meaning in some of the old hymns that we sang, such as when we called the Holy Spirit the Comforter, the heavenly gift of God Most High, the anointing from above. We saw that the promise of Jesus that there would always be an advocate for us, always a helper, always one with us, close at hand, was being fulfilled. And I watched the lives of ordinary Catholics begin to take on new depth and new energy. More love of the Eucharist, more love of Scripture, more love of Mary, the first among us to receive the Holy Spirit. More openness to other Christians who now we saw as brothers and sisters, not as competitors. We began to see that the wonderful things done in the early church in the New Testament were not just for long ago, but they were for us too. We could experience them in our own lives. New energy to reach out into the world to bring the presence of God into our broken world. And at first, people didn't have the word to describe what this new change was, this new energy, this new power and presence of the Spirit in our lives. And so we borrowed a term from other Christians, a term that we find in the Gospel today. We called it the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Like many of you, I was baptized when I was just about two weeks old, baptized in water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I was raised in the Catholic faith by my parents. We went to Mass every Sunday. I went to Catholic schools. All those very familiar stories. And yet I realized that God has more to give us than just a good education and the ceremonies and the rituals of our traditions. That God intended for us to live deeply the life of Jesus, to live deeply in the power of the Holy Spirit. To this day, I believe I continue to grow in the Spirit, I believe that what God gave me at my day of my baptism in the church was just the first of many, many encounters I would have with the Lord Jesus. And my life in the Spirit is still a work in progress. I know that I still need God's strength within. I know that that sacrament that I was given and all the sacraments of the church, the life of our faith community, a great source of strength. I know that the Lord, the giver of life, the Holy Spirit, continues to be with us. I've come to know Jesus more and more personally and more powerfully thanks to the gift of the Spirit. So today I invite all of us to listen to what the prophet John the Baptist is saying when he says that there is one who is coming after us, one who desires to give to you and to me a new source of comfort, a new source of life, that we can live more deeply the life of Jesus, each in our own way. Inward strength to deal with the hurts and the doubts and the pains and the brokenness of our own times the brokenness of our world. New strength to go out and do those good things that God has called us each to do in our own vocation, to truly be the leaven in the world, the light of the world that Jesus has called us to be. Come Holy Spirit, immerse us in your love and in your grace, in your power. Purify us and renew us, encourage us and strengthen us and send us into the world as witnesses of Jesus.